welcome back guys uh so if you remember in the last video uh, we configured the the request package that uh, how we we can uh, bring the the packages uh, python packages which are not available as part of the 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 uh, the lambda function uh, if we are using python and how we can bring those packages across so now we have that request package uh, available as part of our lambda function and if we quickly jump back into our architecture diagram so now you can see we have two parts that we are going to cover in this video we first going to communicate programmatically uh, to our aws cognito service and get the token and then we'll just you know uh, pass that token to api gate and get the the result back from from our uh, api right so we have already <clears throat> completed that exercise in the local environment uh if you want to uh, uh, see that you can watch the previous video i'm going to put the link in the description uh or you can uh, uh, search in the library i think the the part is uh, 7 or 8 where i am showing you how you can call it from from the python environment the only difference that in the previous architecture we have the end user who is calling the the api from from the local environment but now what we are going uh, uh, what we are doing now we will just replace the that end user with another lambda function so that means our api is secure but that api is going to be consumed by another uh, uh, lambda function which is part of that solution so you know we are uh, working on the uh, the microservice architecture we have multiple lambda functions performing different uh, uh, functionality and in order to communicate to each other they need to make sure the the communication is secure and they have a legitimate token uh, before the they make the the call right so that that's uh the the objective of, of this video so let's hit the part, first part uh we're going to actually configure a function that we are already built to get the token from the cognito and if we are successful the token will return back to the lambda function all right so let me jump back into the uh, dev environment so i can act, uh, i have two options i can build the function in here or i can go into my local environment and then build there and then promote the code back into uh into the lambda uh, environment so let's uh, take the latter approach uh let me quickly come back in in here so i've already downloaded if you remember we uh, have downloaded the 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 code in my local environment and now what i can do i can enhance this code in here so let me just bring the requests. Yeah, and the, I don't need to go on. So I'm good. So let me grab that function. So you can see, I have that function, which I built at part of the, the previous video. Let me just copy that code first. So, I'm not going to change this code because this code was working uh, in the previous video and I believe and you, uh, this code is nothing but an, uh, a module which will call the the MS, uh, AWS uh, Cognito and get the token and if the co token is successful what it's going to do it's going to it's going to call another function which what, which we will comment at the moment because we haven't built that function right so uh we're just gonna work on on this function that we have built in the previous video and i believe if everything goes well we are able to get the token in the lambda environment so let me just quickly fix that uh, library issue i need to promote http basic auth as well separately so okay so I believe all errors were gone. So let me save it. And if, like I mentioned, we can download, we can set up and we can uh, promote back or upload the the uh, the uh, Lambda function, right? So let's go and let's upload the function. And I'll use the zip archive methodology uh, where what it will do. Oh, sorry, I'll use the folder methodology directory. Let me quickly use that. And let me go in here. That's my uh, uh, function, which if you remember, it, is, it has all the required libraries. So let me just hit open. Yeah, I want to overwrite. And guess what? Once it's done, uh, it's uh, uploaded the the uh, the function. We have all that code available into my uh, Lambda environment. So let me quickly refresh my environment page.
So you can see it has already detected the changes, uh, the new changes appear and let me hit so uh, okay. So now you can see the same code that we have promoted in a uh, build in our uh, local environment is now available in here. Now, how are we gonna run it? It's different obviously compared to the local Python environment. We have the Lambda function, which has a starting point. And if you remember, we have the, the e test event that we can use to test the functionality of the function. Now, one of the major thing that I want to show you that if we get the uh, legitimate token, we are already printing it in, in here, but also we can return from this function. So what, what I'll do, let me just store it into, oh, I'm already storing in, in the access token, which is good. If there is an error, so access token will be empty, All right? And at the end of the code, let me return that access token back to my calling environment, which is simple. So now I can call this environment, this code, and by the way, these changes are not going to reflect in the in the in the local environment because I'm just making it here for my own testing, right? So once it's done, I know that function is there. I'm going to switch back into my uh, local environment, build that other module, bring the code back into my Lambda environment, and then I can readjust so it, it's able to run within the Lambda environment. But those adjustments are very minor. And if I get my token, let me just store that token into a uh, local variable, yeah, access token, and I'll just attach that as a part of the output. So I need to convert it into the string and I need to pass that token in, in here. So let me just hit deploy and let me just hit test. And there we go. We have a valid token that we can this. So let me quickly go back and copy that token and just show you that the token is valid. Let me stop, replace, and we can see we have a token which is active for next one hour. Okay. Now that part is done. So that means we are getting a legitimate token uh, from our Cognito in another Lambda function. Now the second part we can do in the in the Python environment or we can do directly into our Lambda code. So let me just uh, just to show you the the Lambda part, but because I've already made some changes, I'll, I'll do it in, in here. And we can do the same thing in the uh, Python, promote it back, but just to, to save some time, uh, let me open the other uh, function, which is get static a statistic a statistical uh, calculation, and you can see I'm passing the token. Now I need that function because I already built as part of the previous video. Let me quickly go there and let me grab that uh, get statistical calculation. So let me copy and paste it in in here. So which is gonna cover the full architecture, if you remember. So I'm getting now token. And now once I get the token, I'm gonna make a call to my API, right? So the second function is gonna make that call. And let me quickly jump back to just show you how the call looks like. So we are passing the access token and that access token is calling the, the API URL, which is uh, the, the front face of our Lambda function. And we are passing the token as part of the header in the uh, under the authorization key. And if everything goes well, we have the response, which is gonna have the result coming from our uh, source or our uh, statistical uh, lambda function, which is obviously, if you remember, is a factorial function, which is returning us the factorial of the number, right? So pretty uh, simple and straightforward uh, function that we have built. And it's uh, I've already explained it in the in the previous video, if you haven't watched it, I'm gonna put the link in the in the description. You can see uh, that video to just understand the concept of these two uh, modules that I have added in my Lambda function. But I think at this stage, we are pretty good. I've already opened the, the get statistical calculation uh, uh, function on the success of my uh, my JWT token uh, call to, to uh, Cognito. So let's hit the deploy. And now finger crossed, if we are able to, to 
if we uh, our calls are going to be successful we are going to get the uh, the result so because we have already printing the the token what i'll do now instead of printing the token uh, i will print the response dot json so what we'll do uh, we are printing the response dot json and also i will store that response dot json in the results Right. I want to see that results. Yeah. Right. So, and in, in case of error, my results are going to be empty. Right. Because I'm already printing the 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 response uh, error. If uh, there is a failure and I can go to the cloud watch and I can look at the 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 logs to see what error is if my lambda function fails, right? So that's why I'm not returning the 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 result back into my result, right? So result is going to return me the the sorry, I need result will be returned back to the calling environment. So let me just do the results. So all good in here. I need to receive that result in 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 here. So let me just do that. I'm getting the results in in here. And now instead of returning the access token, what I'll do, I'll just you know return the result. Right. So that result will be uh the the outcome of the uh of the the uh get access token with secret because internally it is calling the uh jw there are multiple approach you can first get the token and then you can instead of calling the token uh a, a method from from access token you can call it uh from the lambda handler so whatever approach you want to uh, take it's gonna work no, uh, no problem on that So oh, yeah, in here, let me just do results. Let me save the results. So why I'm using result everywhere? Because it will be more rational instead of access token. Uh, but you can see uh, it's gonna be gonna be a similar concept. Uh, so the the uh, the flow will be we first go get the token, pass that token to the to the API, get the result and return the result to the calling environment. And then we'll print on the screen to see whether our result has the, the required values uh, coming from the statistical calculation or not. So let me hit deploy. And let's see, let me hit test. There we go. We have the factorial calculated factory. Let me take that uh, default message out. I don't want to print that message because that's just confusing and by the way i'm going to now change my calculation function as well because i'm just printing the factorial of seven let's let me just put eight i change the function so now the instead of uh, put, uh, printing the factorial of seven it should print the factorial of eight all right so if i come in here and Print it so you can see the factorial has been changed just now instead of printing factorial of seven it is printing factorial of eight which is obviously four zero three two zero just to match the output we can test from here as well so same output you can see in in here so that that's way uh, that's the way we can call one secure lambda function to another uh, uh using the the api gateway and uh and uh jwt uh through the cognito so it's pretty simple small architecture but it will give you a very good baseline to build really complex architecture or solution which gonna be secure and which gonna really work well in the in the uh production environment now the only uh challenge what we have that we are using the the statistical value or static value sorry now statistical value, static value into my calling environment, which is obviously not a secure practice. Always remember, never ever put any static, uh, static value in your code 
uh, especially if you are building the uh, uh, in the cloud environment, right? Anything that you can think if it leaks, it's going to create a damage, please take them out and put into the secure uh, uh, service or secure store, which is obviously in the uh, in the AWS environment. It's called the secret manager. Uh, in the next video, just to conclude anything, and uh, we, we're going to use the secret manager to move all these values into our uh, secret manager and then read it from there in the lambda function so our uh, our uh, code is not going to have any client id secret or url it's just going to have the the secure way to call everything on the api side it's just the jwt token and on the on the credential level everything will be stored right in the in the secret manager and if if you remember i mentioned the architecture work evolves over the time as we progress in the dev environment so you're going to see in the in the next video we're going to have a new service which is going to link with the aws lambda right and what it will do it uh, lambda will first call that service to get all the all the uh, required information before it can communicate with the cognito and now because we have multiple uh, uh, paths which are triggering from from the lambda so in order to show the flow i might need to numbering it right so now you can see how the diagram work and how the diagram uh, literally give you the the advantage to understand uh the the flow of the solution if you are not involved, uh, involved in the in the dev uh, part of the solution but at least from the architecture diagram you can understand the complete flow and if you need to communicate with let's say with the business or any other uh, uh stakeholder which is not directly related to this project you can explain them in 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 the in the plain english so that that's that's the the uh, the the advantage of of uh, building the architecture beside the the development phase and uh, that's how we can use one lambda function to call another lambda function uh, through secure uh, api uh, hopefully that will be useful uh, and it will help you to build your own api and, uh, within the cloud environment using the the two powerful service api gateway and cognito and feel free if you have any question more than happy to answer otherwise please like or comment on on the video if you want to see any additional feature or functionality more than happy to record that as well uh thanks for watching and stay tuned for for the last part to add the secret manager